Hello and welcome back to the Jolly Franchers YouTube channel. I am a small team making a video game called The Kid Detective with the lovely Zach Fadler, our editor. Let's give him a round of applause. This would not be happening without him. And today we are going over menu dialogue or menu options. Basically any amount of buttons on screen that allow a player to decide between branching paths. You could use menu buttons for an inventory or a simple text game like go right and go left as menu options. They can be used for almost anything. I've made an inventory out of them. I've made a logic puzzle using them. I've done too much with them. And here today you will start learning how to do enough. One more thing before we begin. On June 11th, through 13th, the first annual unofficial, unofficial Fungus Game Jam, Kombucham 2021, begins. This is a very low-key game jam hosted by someone on the Discord server, Casey Wiederman. I will post the link in the description below, and I will personally be joining the game jam, and I hope to develop a character controller that can do something like the characters in Monkey Island, because that's a very requested feature, and hopefully I can figure out how to do that. And maybe I'll even complete the tutorial game, The Big Heist, from my point-and-click adventure series for this game jam. I'm promising a lot. It will not pay off. So anyway, let's get into the video, but before you do, please click, click like, click subscribe, and leave a comment about what you want to do, see in this video. Okay, let's do it. Hello again, we are back with our old scene. We worked on say dialogues last time, and this time we're going to go further in depth with these menu dialogues. So let's just play the scene we have right now, just to get familiar with it. Hey, I'm frequently interrupted. We interrupted them with the question, what would you like to do? And now we have our two menu buttons. Right now, they both do basically the same thing. We go back to the start of our game, no matter which one we click on. So let's see what the options underneath the menu dialog command in our flowchart do. You can leave a description for yourself, just a note for yourself in the future, which will become important if you have a big game and you need to quickly determine why did I do this? What does it do? What did I mean to do? It could be helpful to leave yourself a note. Down here, we can select the block we want the menu option to go to. When the player clicks on the menu button, it will execute the block that you tell it to. The first option we are going to look at and actually play playing the game is hide if visited. Now this option doesn't work with the fungus save system yet, but in a single playthrough, if I pick this option, it doesn't hide this option, but if I pick this option, we'll come back around to the same menu and it hid it because we visited it. So that's what hide if visited does. Interactable, if you uncheck interactable, you will simply have a, an option which you cannot click. As you can see, it's grayed out. You can change the color of a non-interactable button, a deactivated button, when we create a menu dialog and, and customize this menu dialog. You might want something like this if you're using a menu dialog to make an inventory and the person doesn't have, you know, say this menu option was arrows. The player doesn't have any arrows arrows and so they can't click this item in their inventory. That's why you might want to make something um, not interactable. And then you can also just have hide this option and it won't be seen whatsoever. Yeah, we can't see it because we hid that option. That would be a similar reason for the inventory. You don't have an inventory item and so you want to hide that option at a certain time. Toggle it on and off with a fungus variable, which you can see down here we have none of, and we're going to go into that in a later video. But I've already covered variables a bit in my previous point and click series. Go give that a watch. So let's create our menu dialog and let's customize the way it looks a bit. So I'm gonna go up here, tools, fungus, create menu dialog. We can see it in all its glory. I am going to go over here and make the say dialog invisible so I can really focus on the menu dialog. The menu dialog is comprised 
of this main part of the game object over here in the inspector. We have a canvas, which right now it makes it so that no matter where your camera is, no matter how many fungus camera moving commands you use, that the menu dialog and the say dialog will always appear over your screen, over your camera, wherever it is. That's what screen space overlay and screen space camera does. If you switch this to world space, it would appear in a single place in the world, which you might want. I don't know. You could place it somewhere in your scene. Maybe if you wanted like uh, speech bubbles to appear over characters in your world, you could use a world space canvas as your menu dialog or say dialog. The only thing here is auto select first button that you might want to toggle. If you use a controller, you can press the arrow keys or toggle the joystick to switch between these different menu buttons here and it will just auto select the first one. It won't actually click on it, it'll just highlight it and you can start scrolling up and down the menu buttons. So you might want to have something like that. I'll check it so that you can see what it looks like. I don't mess with the default selectable, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't. <laughs> you might want to check this interactable button to see what happens. I don't know what'll happen. Here is your button group. These two components help keep the buttons in sort of neat, orderly fashion. The content size fitter is set that the horizontal fit is unconstrained, and so it stretches when I stretch it. But because it's set to preferred side on the vertical axis, it just moves up and down when I try to stretch it. If I set the vertical fit to unconstrained, I can stretch it too. As you can see, the buttons don't stretch with it. And that's because child force expand, as it's referring to child here and child alignment. This button group is the parent object and any game objects in the hierarchy that are underneath this parent are called children or childs, <laughs> if you will. And so what it's saying is that because height is unchecked, as you can see, I checked it and the childs, they expanded due to the width of this box. And if I unchecked that, then it would shrink into oblivion. These are different things you can play with. You can turn it off. You can move buttons to various sides. You can create an inventory this way. You can do almost anything with menu buttons. I'm going to change this back to a size that will fit on our screen. And if you go to the option buttons here, and there's a timeout slider here, which we will uh, go over really quick. But if you select, if you click and then shift click, hold shift and click the last one, you can select all of these and you can change their attributes at the same time. For instance, I want the color of these buttons to be more red, radical. Right now it's set so that when you hover over a button, it switches to a different sprite. I could change this sprite to be anything. For instance, a pained sprite of Watson that comes with fungus. We'll see what terrible ramifications that has and why you shouldn't do it. But that's just one of the way you can customize buttons. Buttons are like a native UI feature to Unity. You can go up here and you can go to UI and create your own button. This is something that's built in with Unity. And so if you ever find yourself having problems with canvases or images or buttons or anything having to do with Unity UI, there are plenty of tutorials on the internet. Fungus is not... Even though there are not very many tutorials on the internet, there is still hope. You can figure out what's going on because it's all a part of Unity, which is well documented and many people have tutorials. As you can see here, you can set many things for the transitions of your button. If you hovered over it, you could play an animation. You could change the color of the button. There are a lot of options. If you go here into our block where we put our menu options, we're gonna go to narrative. We're going to go to menu timer. Now the timer demands a block and I am just going to create a new block and call it death. And I'm just going to create a say dialogue and say not fast enough. And that's because a menu timer is like if you've ever played telltale games, type games like the wolf among us or uh, the Walking Dead. Those games have menu timers, meaning they make you choose an option within a certain amount of time. And this is where you can put in that amount of time. I'll choose five seconds because that seems at least somewhat lenient for the consequence of death that's coming. 
And as you can see, the timer is ticking down. And when it runs out, it executes the block, which tells us we're not fast enough. And the game is over now. There's nothing I can do because I died. I'm going to change this timer. I'm just going to have it call go left. Because what I'm going to show you is the menu shuffle option. This might be useful if you're creating um, maybe a, like a trivia game or you're against speed running for some reason. So if you have the menu shuffle option set to once, it's going to shuffle our two menu options, whichever way it so pleases. It chose go right. Okay, one of our menu options is not visible, so I'm gonna go fix that real quick so we can get the full effect. Hide this option is checked, so I'm going to uncheck that so we can see them both. Go right, go left. We're going to see them again. Go right, go left. Go right, go left. They're shuffling in the same way every time because we chose the shuffle option, shuffle once. As you can see here, they're in the order go left, go right. So it shuffled them into the order go right, go left. And because we chose the shuffle option once, it shuffles them that way every time you go back to that same menu. But if I select the menu shuffle option every, it will shuffle them every single time we come back to the same menu buttons. Go right, go left. Go left, go right. Whoa, what a shuffle. I'm so bamboozled, and the menu timer is so fast. And when I hover over my menu button, it turns into a scary face of pained John Watson. One more thing. If you want more than six, one, two, three, four, five, six menu options at any given time, I've had as many as 25 before or so, you can go to your menu dialog here, go to button group, and what I like to do is right click, duplicate, and then I just drag one of them to the side like so. Wow, now I have 12 options. And just to prove that it works, I will have to prove that it works. Here I go. Now that's a game if I've ever seen one. <laughs> what a What a good game. So as you can see here, the menu timer for some reason is up here and all that, but you, you can fix that. I believe in you. Go forth now with the conviction of your menu dialogue. I believe in you. So that's menu dialogues, baby. Enjoy. We will cover more Fungus Basics in the next week or maybe two weeks. Okay, that was menu dialogues. Next time, I think we'll do something the the next thing in fungus so next time i think we're gonna do fungus variables wow it's gonna be a big one it's gonna be a lot but it's extremely useful and i use them all the time and it will allow you to do stuff like if you have a certain amount of money, then you could buy something. If you have a certain item in your inventory, you can do something with a shopkeeper. While you are running, you play this animation. You can do these kind of things with variables, conditions, etc. Science, math, and we'll cover it all next time on Jolly Franchers. Stay jolly! <laughs> it's an anime.